In this lecture, I'm going to talk about something in pore biology known as quorum sensing. Quorum sensing is essentially a way that the two species can interact with each other to give a rise to an important biological function. For example, in this lecture, I'm going to talk about, you know, um, um, I think it's the viscery inside the squid. So viscery is a bacteria, it's a specific bacteria inside the squid that would allow it to that will allow a screw to have a really high luminate light. It will like to glow in light at which at night helps the squid to be able to identify prey, run away from prey, find food, and it said that the squid would give the various fiscari with nutrition and food. But the thing is, how can this happen? How can these two interact with each other? This is from bacteria and this is from eukaryotic, right? How can these two interconnect with each other? Well, this is again known as something as quorum sensing. So, quorum sensing is dependent on number of cell density. All right. So, imagine you are in a soldier in a warfare. If you're in, a, if you're in a front line, single person shooting at an enemy doesn't gonna do anything. All at once have to shoot at the same time to give a rise to a successful attack. Same as this one. All the, all the, in this case, autoinducer, which is known as AHL in this case. There's plenty of autoinducer for a specific um, current sensing genes, but in this one, I'm going to talk about autoinducer AHL, which I forgot the full name. Um, but AHL is an autoinducer, that is, it is being used. To be able to give rise to light of this good. How? Let me show you how. So imagine this is the V viscary cell. Okay. It has that AHL synthase inside itself. So this is AHL synthase, right? AHL. This is AHL synthase. So it, as the name suggests, it produces AHL out of the user. So, but the thing is, at a very low concentration of this cell, so we don't have much of the cell life, there are much of the cell replicated, so the, the population of the cell is low. At the low population, the AHL is, is favored to go outside of cytoplasm to the outside. This is outside environment, this is inside cytoplasm, right? So the AHL produced would go out like that, right? You have plenty of HL outside. So, same as we with Fiskra, it would only glow the bioluminescent. I think it's bio. Let me. It's bio. Okay. Bioluminescence. I think it's right, yeah. So, bioluminescence is the light that would glow. In the squid, so bioluminescence would only be activated, would glow in the squid once the population of the cell is large, because AHL is cell density dependent. So if, uh, in a case, we see ten to the ten power of ten cells per millimeter must be present of the viscera in the squid, so that by that, by that time, we then have, we no longer have, having favored um, AHL going out of the cell to the side, to the outside. We see, for example, AHL from, from here, because there are like plenty of cells, right? Producing the same thing. So they would go inside the cell. They would bind something known as activator protein. Activator protein. So they would bind to this activated protein. And upon binding with this activated protein, they would give rise to, they would activate it, a specific quorum sensing gene. All right, so, so let me, quorum activated. 
activated and hence we have a chrome surgeon protein being produced. This is chrome sensing protein. So we see AHO is in going inside the cell binding to the active protein and a specific chrome sensing protein is being produced now. So now because of the reaching the population threshold, the AHL number increases, inside the cell increases. Remember, even though for reaching the full bioluminous scene, we need to have enough soldiers in the front line. We need to have enough AHL inside the cell. And now, um, we need to have a specific of this amount of AHL inside the cell so that the bioluminous scene would fully grow. All right, so we would have a specific, specific, specific AHL inside cell. Bioluminescine would light. And this is how we see chrome sensing work. So they communicate with each other. They don't, by the light doesn't just go for itself. It all has to be conditions need to be met because otherwise there would be a waste of energy. By this, they would ensure the most saving of the energy and more and more efficient, most efficient thing. And um, yes, this is one of the good examples. There is another example as, as well that is between interdomain. Interdomain means they're between different species. Uh, meaning, for example, we can have, um, I'm sure you heard of the bacteria rhizo ribosome, rhizobium, and the plant that would once the ribos rhizobium goes inside a plant, it would change to this different form, nitrogen fixing form, bacterioids. And these bacteria would able to give the plant its sufficient nitrogen source, and plant instead would give the bacteria its specific nutrition source. And this is being progressed with current sensing as well. And um, yeah, so I hope you guys find this video helpful. Please um, leave me a like if you. Right, thank you.